Dragon and Starliner, which one truly stands out? The answer is clear, and no one knows this better than NASA, the agency overseeing both spacecraft programs. They are acutely aware of how Dragon eclipses Starliner in virtually every aspect. Let's dive into the latest revelations from NASA's recent press conference and uncover the truth behind these pressing questions. How does Dragon outshine Starliner? Mm, and why is it so? Boeing Starliner has proven it can fly to space and dock with the International Space Station. Uh, but can it return back to Earth safely? No one knows this first uncrewed test flight. CRD-1 exposed a slew of critical hardware issues with Starliner. Among them, the propulsion system is at the top of NASA's and Boeing's list of worries. These malfunctions aren't just minor glitches that can be easily fixed. They're fundamental problems that could impact the entire mission and the safety of the crew. In the most recent press conference on August 4th, so representatives reveal that the agency is continuously conducting tests and analyzing data on the thrusters' performance. In an unprecedented and colossal effort, NASA has rallied some of the brightest means in propulsion systems from key NASA centers across the United States. About experts in spaceflight from Kennedy Space Center, Marshall Space Flight Center, Johnson Space Center, and many more specialists from NASA's facilities nationwide. Yeah, and despite assembling this formidable team of experts, NASA still hasn't reached a consensus on Starliner's status. During the press conference, representatives revealed new findings during their analysis, but they declined to provide specific details. Silence on these new discoveries could be a sign of cert they still haven't fully grasped the implications of the data or the root causes of the malfunctions. More importantly, they can't accurately predict how Starliner will reform during its return to Earth, the most critical and dangerous phase of any crewed spaceflight. This might be the first time in history that a spacecraft has remained so mysterious. A vessel designed to challenge even the biggest brains at NASA before it can safely ferry humans to the ISS and back. Starliner CFT-1 is a chain reaction of mistakes. We have to know this. In technology, the relationship between hardware and software is always the key factor determining the success of any mission. This is especially true for spacecraft, where the interaction between these two components must be flawless down to the smallest detail. The shutdown of Starliner's thrusters is a prime example of how a single issue can spiral into a complex web of problems. In this case, the software detected overheating and a loss of thrust, leading it to command a shutdown of five malfunctioning thrusters to protect the system. However, this forced the astronauts to manually intervene and reactivate four of the five thrusters. Hardware issues forced Boeing to consider bringing Starliner back automatically. In this scenario, the astronauts would return to Earth under safer conditions aboard the Dragon, while Starliner would make its way back unmanned. And this is where the software issues take center stage. According to experts, the Starliner is now incapable of autonomously undocking from the ISS without manual intervention. During its second uncrewed test flight, OFT-2, Starliner successfully accomplished this maneuver, but that's not the case this time. The reason behind this change is that Boeing decided to remove a proven automatic undock software program, replacing it with a less automated version that has never been tested in real-world conditions. It's honestly baffling. What is Boeing even doing with their Starliner program right now? At the moment, Boeing is working aggressively to fix the issues. They say it could take another four weeks, but whether those fixes will be reliable, they can't guarantee. You see, the thruster issue wasn't just an isolated technical glitch. It triggered a cascade of other issues, creating a worrying domino effect across the spacecraft. NASA, at the present time, has to step in and clean up a $4.6 billion mess, courtesy of Boeing. As Starliner grapples with a series of technical issues, the fate of astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore seems to be slipping into the background of public discussions. In the latest press conference, NASA confirmed they're in regular contact with Suni and Butch, who are contributing valuable data to ground tests. However, when asked if their personal opinions would impact the final decision about returning to Earth, NASA remained tight-lipped. Instead, the U.S. Space Agency emphasized that Suni and Butch would follow NASA's directives as part of their duties as astronauts. This response indirectly suggests that Butch and Suni may no longer be particularly optimistic about Starliner's condition. Ken Bowersox, NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, remarked, We've got time available before we bring Starliner home, and we want to use that time wisely. Dr. Simeon Barber, a space scientist at the Open University, shared with the BBC, it seems that there are decision makers at NASA who are unconvinced that a safe return can be guaranteed, which is why they have brought in experts to look through the data to try and diagnose the fault in a small component in a complex propulsion system that is in space. He further added, it is hard to see how that will be possible, so it feels to me that we are heading inexorably towards a return on SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. And this is where NASA began to realize just how far ahead Dragon was. 
even as far back as five years ago. During the DEMO-2 mission, NASA meticulously monitored and evaluated every aspect of the flight, from the launch to docking with the International Space Station, ISS, and all the way through Crew Dragon's return to Earth. NASA conducted thorough assessments and checks to ensure all systems were functioning correctly and safely. The agency was extremely satisfied and proud following the success of DEMO-2. Since then, Dragon has become the only spacecraft in the U.S. to transport astronauts to the ISS. The point is, why is Dragon so smooth? SpaceX has adhered to a consistent and robust principle in hardware construction and software development. They place a strong emphasis on ensuring that if one component fails, it doesn't have the power to take down the entire system and cause a chain of cascading issues. They've mastered the art of isolating glitches and writing defensive logic, specialized code designed to handle unexpected situations or failures. Take a look at the difference here. The fully autonomous capability of Dragon stands out as a remarkable advantage. The spacecraft can complete the entire journey to and from the ISS without any crew intervention. All screens and buttons on board are designed as backup options, only to be used in unforeseen or emergency situations. Dragon's backup system is meticulously crafted. The spacecraft is equipped with three screens. If one fails, the remaining two can fully compensate. Even in the unlikely event that all three screens go down, the crew still has a control panel with physical buttons to initiate emergency responses. On top of that, the spacecraft can be controlled from the ground providing an ultimate layer of protection. Another key factor behind Dragon's remarkable reliability lies in SpaceX's rigorous system integration and testing process. SpaceX focuses heavily on integrating individual hardware and software components into a complete system and then testing the entire setup. This approach allows the company to uncover and fix errors that arise from component interaction, a type of issue often overlooked during isolated tests. But SpaceX doesn't stop there. They go the extra mile by making these tests as realistic as possible. They create simulated environments that mirror actual flight conditions, including extreme temperatures, vibrations, and cosmic radiation. This ensures that Dragon performs well not only under ideal conditions, but also in the harshest scenarios it might face in space. A prime example of this is SpaceX's development of a specialized testing chamber to simulate the microgravity and vacuum of space. In this chamber, they rigorously tested Dragon's attitude control system, making sure it could maintain precise orientation under all circumstances. One of the most remarkable aspects of SpaceX's testing process is their proactive approach to failure scenarios. The company deliberately induces component failures, allowing them to thoroughly and realistically test how the system handles such situations. For instance, during the development of Dragon's landing system, SpaceX intentionally sabotaged one of the four parachutes to see if the spacecraft could land safely with only three. Tests like these help them identify and address potential vulnerabilities, strengthening the system's resilience against unexpected challenges. While this approach has led to a spectacular number of explosions on SpaceX's YouTube channel, rest assured that most of these fiery displays are part of their rigorous testing process. SpaceX doesn't just test once and move on. They conduct all relevant tests multiple times with every change, no matter how minor. This approach ensures that every improvement is thoroughly vetted and doesn't introduce new issues. When compared to SpaceX's testing protocol, the challenges faced by Boeing's Starliner become more apparent. While SpaceX emphasizes integrated testing and real-world simulations, Boeing seems to have relied more on traditional methods, focusing heavily on isolated component testing. Furthermore, Boeing appears to place less emphasis on simulating extreme failure scenarios. This could explain why Starliner has encountered so many unforeseen difficulties during its test flights. You see, that's the difference when accountants run a tech company versus when engineers are in charge. It's a world apart. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.